Ashley, as usual, you have the definitive piece of reporting on this topic. I'm going to read from it. For Republicans, fealty to Trump's election falsehood becomes defining loyalty test nearly six months after Trump lost to Biden. Rejection of the 2020 election results dubbed the big lie by many Democrats has increasingly become an unofficial litmus test for acceptance in the Republican Party. The issue also could reverberate through the 2022 midterms and 2024 election, with Trump already slamming Republicans who did not resist the election results. For Republicans, fealty to the falsehood could pull the party further to the right during the primaries, providing challenges during the general election when wooing more moderate voters is crucial. And for Democrats, the continued existence of the claim threatens to undermine Biden's agenda. It's a brilliant piece of reporting, Ashley. My only question is, is it really a pull to the right or is it a pull down to this post-fact Republican Party? Well, what's been fascinating to watch and what we tried to document in that story was how the Republic, the fringe, what we would consider the fringe and what Republicans generally would consider the fringe of the party. So on the outside has sort of eaten the party from the outside in. And now is it beating heart? And so what was interesting was you're having these debates um, not just in Washington, where you have lawmakers trying to whitewash what actually happened on January 6th and offer revisionist history, where you're seeing the fight, you know, play out very publicly um, in House Republican leadership, but all across the country in ways that are less noticed, right? You're having, you know, local elected officials, party chair people, par you know, state party executive directors who are being censored and purged and cast out of their party for the sin of basically saying, you know what, the election was valid. And while I don't like it, I accept Joe Biden as my president. And, and that is what is so striking, that it is nationwide and at just about every single level of the Republican Party. And Charlie Sykes, Ashley has just put it perfectly, as perfectly as it's been put since it started. Mm -hmm. There was a purge underway for any Republican who dares mm -hmm. to utter the truth. As a result of that purge, and we should call it what it is, it is a purge of Republicans who tell the truth about Donald Trump losing in a massive way in November. Here is the ad that has just been made to help Liz Cheney, who is really at risk now of losing her leadership position. Let's watch. After our capital was attacked, our representatives in Congress were threatened, and a police officer was killed. Representative Cheney had a choice. She could look the other way and pretend it didn't happen, or she could stand up and say, this can never happen again. Thank you, Representative Cheney, for upholding your oath to the Constitution and for protecting our country. So, Charlie, Liz Cheney has yeah. few uh, defenders in her caucus, but there, there's one um, who explained one of her fellow 10 votes um, to impeach Trump um, uh, said this. If a prerequisite for leading our conference is continuing to lie to our voters, then Liz is not the best fit. That was Representative Anthony Gonzalez of Ohio, who also voted to impeach Trump. Liz isn't going to lie to people. Liz is going to say what she believes. She's going to stand on principle. And if that's going to be distracting for folks, she's not the best fit. I wish that weren't the case. That's where they are. If you tell the truth, you are not a good fit. That's right. Yeah, no, this is a party. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates are in uh, are in good stead, and, and Liz Cheney may be on the way out. Look, I just have to say, you know, we talk a lot about profiles and courage. Uh, Liz Cheney is really a remarkable woman. I, I, I keep coming to mind uh, the uh, comment by, by Margaret Thatcher, the lady is not for turning. And the contrast between Liz Cheney and the Castrati of the Republican caucus is so dramatic these days. And that statement that she issued today, was really interesting because she was also pushing back on Trump issuing a statement saying that he's going to call the entire election the big lie. And she's saying, no, um, I'm not going along with that. Now, uh, given the threat to her leadership, what, what they really want her to do is be silent. They want her to shut up. They want her to stop talking about this. They want her, maybe, you know, obviously, because she could save her career by going along with the lie. But, you know, just simply keeping her mouth shut, looking the other way might be sufficient and she won't do it. And this really is an interesting, you know, counter indicator to what's happening in the Republican Party, where all of the incentives now are to go along with these ludicrous uh, conspiracy theories about the election. And by the way, we haven't talked about it yet, but, uh, you know, that video of 
of uh, Donald Trump coming out on the porch at Mar-a-Lago for open mic night and talking about the Arizona uh, recount and how might, you know, all these these votes. Honestly, how do Republicans look at that even after four years and not go, you know, we got to be we got to move on from this guy. How do you look at that and say, this is our leader. We believe him. We trust him. We need to follow him. Let's make him president again. So I really did think that Mitt Romney asked the most appropriate question when he said, aren't you embarrassed? I mean, leave leave the whole life. You know, obviously, you know, they're not they're, they're beyond shame. They have no shame, but at least be embarrassed about how ridiculous. Ridiculous this has become, but it's also dangerous as well. Well, and Charlie, I just want to follow up with you. I mean, it is striking that in one weekend, the three former names that used to define, and, and, and I suppose this is why Donald Trump won, right? I mean, Cheney, obviously, from, from, from the um, occupant of the White House in 2000 and 2004, McCain was the party standard bearer in eight. Romney in 12, it's not that their views should have governed the party forever, but it's just it is happening in such an accelerated pace that not only do they not have standing in the party, they get booed. Liz Cheney is about to be evicted from her leadership post. Romney booed and Cindy McCain, obviously so out of step with what her state party is doing. And it all comes down to one thing. It comes down to um, their loyalty to Donald Trump and their willingness to go along with this big lie about the election. Uh, Liz Cheney is a rock solid conservative. She has a plus 95 percent rating from conservative groups. Uh, Mitt Romney, you know, former uh, for, former standard bearer of, of, of his party. Look, um, these would be in good stead um, with the Republican Party if they'd adopted the QAnon conspiracy theory. Instead, they're being cast out. This has nothing to do with ideology. It has nothing to do with principles or issues. It all comes down to this question of their loyalty to Donald Trump. Well, and Claire McCaskill, the, the danger to the country isn't that the Republican Party has lost its way. The danger to the country is that the litmus test that Ashley writes about intersects with the domestic threat warning. It is in line with the ideology of those who represent the gravest threat to the homeland. So it's not just a cult around Donald Trump. It's around the lie that must be told so that he doesn't look like the loser he is. And then that lie also intersects with the same ideology that threatens the homeland. When you allow an extreme fringe to take over your party and emboldened by the fact that they're supposed to lie, it is an really not a good prescription for power going forward. Uh, it may feel good today for them to reject Liz Cheney and her telling tr the truth about what really happened on January 6th and what really happened on the first Tuesday in November. But, you know, I'm trying to think what Mitt Romney must feel like coming back to the Senate after that. You know, when you come back to the Senate after you've had a break, and they're on break this week, so when he comes back next week and he walks into a committee room or he walks on the floor and all of the Republican colleagues, you know, John Barrasso and, and Roger Wicker and Jim Langford, all these people who like to give lofty speeches about character and integrity, what do they say to him? What do they say to him? Do they say, Mitt, we're sorry, but there's nothing we can do? I mean, why can't all of them give a speech on the floor and say, stop it? Stop booing someone who is just telling the truth. What is really the failure of the Republican Party right now are the elected officials that have allowed the extreme fringe to become, as Ashley said, the beating heart of the Republican Party. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.